With a four-game suspension, Nazem Kadri's season is over. Oh, but the fun part's just about to start. Kadri has been an extremely polarizing player for the Leafs this season, but if you've been paying attention, he's been a polarizing player since he was drafted in 2009. Of course, there was the famous clip of Brian Burke asking Brian Murray if Kadri was his guy. And Murray says yes, and Burke goes, wow, we're taking him anyway. It was awesome! Some people thought he should make the Leafs straight out of Junior, and he didn't. And he gets a one-game emergency recall from Junior, and ah, we all lose our minds. Next season, he goes the the AHL, we all lose our minds again. Dallas Eakins said some stuff. Kills it in the lockout shortened season. Becomes a Corsi God and everyone screams that he should be the Leafs number one center ahead of Tyler Bozak. And they finally give him that top line role and it's mostly between Komarov and Grabner. He dives too much. He draws a lot of penalties. In his breakout lockout shortened campaign he had a 16.8 shooting percentage. This kid is a real deal. Ah, uh, we think he's probably gonna regress. Oh, what do you know? 6.5 shot percentage this year. Oh, just so unlucky. His shot sucks. His attitude sucks. Get rid of him. Babcock likes him. They better not pay this guy five million dollars. He's gritty. He's a dirty rat. The one consistent is nobody doesn't have an opinion on Nazem Kadri. What's yours? Because of all these opinions, some of them have to be right, don't they? I mean, he shot 16.8% in 2013. That's too high, and he was never going to replicate it, and he hasn't. He shot 6.5% this year. That's too low, unlucky, and he'll probably never replicate that. He draws more penalties and puts his team on the power play more than any other player in the league this season last season and for several seasons now and he's been fined for diving and embellishment and granted it wasn't a huge sample but there was a little chunk of the season where refs stopped calling things against him he's had a bad year offensively and he's the Leafs leading scorer he doesn't play with enough fire well, several suspensions later he might play with too much but please do me the favor of not rolling your eyes this is in defense of Nazem Kadri. And for outsiders, you really gotta understand the hockey culture of Toronto. I even pronounced it Toronto, so you all understand. Kadri was picked in 2009 after the Leafs had missed the playoffs for three consecutive seasons. But the year before that, in 2008, the Leafs traded up and drafted Luke Shen fifth overall. And he had a great rookie season and people went nuts. And that was the standard that every Leafs first rounder was held to from then on. So they traded him all for Phil Castle. That's another video. That's another video. Not to mention it must have sucked to be a first rounder in the 2009 NHL draft because look at 2008. Some of the names featured in the first round of 2008 just a murderer's row. Steven Stamkos, Drew Doughty, Zach Bogosian, Alex Petrangelo, Luke Shen, Nikita Filatov, Cody Hodgson, Tyler Myers, Eric Carlson! Not only was it such a strong draft year, especially in the first round, so many of those guys played the season after they were drafted. That, rightly or wrongly, wrongly, became the standard that all hockey fans held drafts to. This is the best draft year since bleh! And all of a sudden, every forward pick was supposed to be Steven Stamkos, and every defender was supposed to be Drew Doughty. Now, Kadri coming into all that in 2009, I mean, tons of players got picked in 2009. Why should we all worry about Kadri? Well, because he was picked by the Leafs. And Leaf fans, let's just be honest with ourselves, there's a lot of us, and we're nuts. And I say that, and I'm just trying to be honest with you. Please be honest with yourselves. A lot of us a lot of us made up our minds on Nazem Kadri when he was like 21 or maybe even 22, 23, but so early in his career we were like, this is the player he is, this is how he thinks, this is how he plays, this is how I feel about him forever. If you think he dives, you think he dives. If you think he's just great at drawing calls, you just think he's great at drawing calls. He's uncoachable. He should be the number one center. He's lucky. He's unlucky. He's a bust. He's the best forward that this team has. He's gone through Dallas Eakins with the Marlies, then Ron Wilson, Randy Carlisle, Peter Horacek, and now Mike Babcock. He was drafted by Brian Burke. He got fired. Dave Nonis came in. He got fired. And now it's Lou Lamorello, Brendan Shanahan, and their band of merry men. The Leafs are in the middle of a rebuild. It looks like they're going to finish either last or second last, barring a miracle in the last week. And despite that, there's actually a ridiculous amount of optimism in Leaf Nation. Holy smokes, look at William Nylander. Kasperi Kapanen has looked so good. It was Connor Kirk. It's not so bad. Oh my goodness, Zach Hyman. Oh my goodness. They, they got Tobias Lindbergh on the first line. Garrett Sparks gets a shutout in his first game. A lot of people have been optimistic about a pretty bad team. I wonder, are people down on Kadri just because he represents the regime of old? A team of 
utter, embarrassing, consistent failure. And we are putting that on the shoulders of a 25 year old. That's why I'm still willing to give Kadri the benefit of the doubt. But you gotta admit, getting suspended by the team at the end of last season looked really bad. Getting into all the trouble he's gotten into recently and then capping that off with a four game suspension to end a contract season, the most important one of his career, is bad. He still makes some young mistakes. And you know what? He's a young guy. But then there's that growing up period. And I think Leafs management and legions of Leaf fans want him to emerge and be that leader. What if he's not? What if he never becomes that guy? Does that mean he's a bust and they should get rid of him? Like, what if he never emerges into a number one center? What if he's just, you know, a pretty good second? Well, you know what most contending teams have, don't you? Pretty good second lines. What if instead of the star we assumed he would be when he was drafted, he's just apart. Well then the Leafs better not give him five million bucks. Well then you better do your research friend because if you go out there and look, especially for centers, five million a season doesn't get you very much. What are you talking about? He wants first line money. Uh, five million bucks is not first line center money. You want Valtteri Philpola on your team? Of course you do. Yeah, he's a pretty decent center. Sure, I'll take him. All right, cool. Five million bucks. Don't believe me? Go to generalfanager.com, cap friendly. You go and look up what centers around the league make. Five million bucks does not get you a number one guy. It gets you a number two, maybe even a really good number three. And now the Leafs need to decide what he is. And not just the cost per season, but the length of the contract. And of course, Kadri has to decide if he still wants to be part of this circus. A circus that will hopefully one day be a contending hockey team. That is the dream, isn't it? So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. I got a link down below to an article by Chris Johnson on Nazem Kadri. Excellent. He actually spoke to a bunch of Leafs about it. And I will see you next time. Who knows, maybe the next video will be about Kadri too. He's everywhere.